Hello everybody, today we're talking about the long-awaited, heavily requested mitochondrial peptide, MOTC, also known as mitochondrial open reading frame of the 12 srRNA-C. This episode will focus on the overview of its biochemical and physical influence. Learning about MOTC is a very fascinating read because it shows promise in many different domains of life, neurologic health, healing, longevity, body composition, osteoporosis, a bunch of different stuff. I hope you enjoy. So in terms of background, MOTC is a 16 amino acid mitochondrial derived peptide. And what this means is that there are these short open reading frames, so little segments in the mitochondrial genome that encode biologically active peptides. So these little reading frames are transcribed and translated, and they create these mitochondrial-derived peptides, or MDPs, like MOTC. This one, in particular, is thought to inhibit the folate cycle and de novo purine synthesis, activating AMPK, which is essentially a metabolic regulator that promotes catabolic activity and suppresses anabolic activity, which, as you'll see, is, you know, very relevant to its role in longevity and insulin sensitivity. It also has downstream antioxidant activity and, you know, a lot of kind of anti-inflammatory properties as well. So it has a ton of proposed roles in metabolic health, homeostasis, insulin sensitivity, and body composition. So before we continue, Here's my video plug. Just please like and subscribe, everyone. This is the first user-requested video, which is super cool. I've had a ton of fun making these videos, researching these topics. And, uh, you know, this is the only way to support the channel. And I appreciate kind of all the conversations we've had and comments and all that stuff. I love it. So we've got some upcoming videos I'll make you aware of. Another user-requested video on oxytocin, very cool neuropeptide. And more kind of diving into the specifics of BPC-157 because, honestly, there's so much going on with that peptide that I can't really fit it all into one video. And uh, we're back at it. So, mitochondria. It is the organelle that's known as the powerhouse of the cell. You know, you'll see plenty of memes about it and jokes. and Because this is what science teachers have been saying since the beginning of time, really. But it's very heavily involved in energy production, metabolism, um, you know, free radical defenses, and that sort of stuff. Um, but essentially the big role, biggest is production of ATP, or the energy that the body uses. So, let's get into the research. Speaking strictly about exercise, there's a big increase, nearly 12-fold, I want to say 11.9-fold, in MOTC after exercise. So the 12-fold part is in skeletal muscle, and it's 1.5 to 1.6-fold in circulating blood levels. So this is really cool. So since exercise causes these increases in MOTC, it's theorized that its use can you know, mediate or create the physiologic process of exercise itself as if you didn't exercise, but the body did. So things like endurance, and I'm really excited to see where this goes. And, you know, maybe the aging population or people who cannot exercise due to injury or, you know, any other disorder, really. Also, uh, Matsi is heavily involved in glucose regulation. So it essentially promotes glucose uptake. So the ability of, you know, glucose to be regulated um, sensitively, insulin sensitivity. So because there's so much skeletal muscle metabolic activity, it more effectively and efficiently essentially breaks down glucose and packs it away, um, utilizing it as well. So in mice, it has shown that it's prevented age and diet-related obesity and insulin resistance. And also in mice, it's improved age-related decline and physical capacity. 
and age-related skin changes as well. And, you know, it's noticed that MOTC decrease, decreases with aging. So, um, you know, the which kind of adds up and not only its role with, you know, muscle and insulin sensitivity, but, you know, also why it might be especially useful in an aging population. So this is a really cool picture. Um, the study itself is cited below. Um, you know, I definitely recommend reading up on all these studies as well, um, just so you can kind of, you know, better understand not only what I'm looking at, but, you know, to also kind of help yourself sift through the research. Um, so you take a mouse, right, with a high fat diet, insulin resistant. You add in MOTC, insulin sensitive, um, which, you know, is really cool how heavily, you know, a little peptide can interfere with the <laughs> mechanics of metabolism. Um, so there are a ton of more specifics that we can get into. Uh, as you know, I like to keep these videos like five to eight minutes. So I don't really touch on everything. Um, this one focused on kind of like the big roles, the the popular roles of MOTC involving insulin sensitivity um, and kind of metabolic activity promoted by uh, its involvement in skeletal muscle. And so um, just more specifics over here, definitely recommend checking out this source. Um, really cool as well, involvement in, well, actually diabetes. We can kind of extrapolate by its role in insulin sensitivity, but the other ones are skin aging, Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, and osteoporosis, which we just briefly touched on. Um, so definitely you can pause here, read through this, check out this article, and um, you know, any questions, concerns, comments, uh, please reach out. I really love making these videos and kind of speaking with you all. And as always, just thank you. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day, my friends.